Hi, so for my video presentation, I chose If You Find a Mouse on a Glue Trap by Suzanne Farrell Smith on page 51. The reason I picked this essay was because I was initially drawn to the title, but after reading it, I felt like it was talking about something um, pretty deep. But um, I'm going to read the passage to you on the second page. Resolved, you will say to your husband, we have to kill the mouse. It's only humane. And he will say, I'm not a person who kills things. And yet here you are, two people who don't believe in glue traps and who don't kill things, kneeling on their new walkway and killing something, killing it slowly. You will free the mouse's back right leg. He will try to scurry on the mangled stick, landing in a hump of snow and spin round and round, toiling to get somewhere but too broken to go. You will collect yourself. The mouse will stop circling and lie still. You will dig a hole around him and say, the furnace room is so warm, isn't it? That's why you found your way in there. You will hope for hy hypothermia. So I chose this passage because it highlights the point of this essay of what makes something humane and what's the right thing to do. This is a scene where all of the elements I'm about to talk about will all come together. So the first point or creative decision uh, Smith made was it's all one paragraph. I normally find stories or essays that are all one paragraph confusing, but this one is pretty clear and concise and easy to follow. It's, not, it's uh, more of a narrative than it is um, abstract. Um, it's also talking about a subject that seems familiar, like if you've ever tried to save a spider in the house or something like that. Um, but it's also one paragraph because it's all one instance. Um, this event, it happens quickly, um, minus the next day where they um, all, when she comes back, or when the narrator comes back and sees um, the mouse has died. Um, but it's also one paragraph because I, it reads pretty quickly. Like it's one instant because it sort of is. And it's a stressful event right from the beginning. Um, if you find a mouse on a glue trap, he'll eyeball you with one black shiny eye while breathing in and out faster than you have ever seen anything breathe. You will panic, though you know the mouse is panicking harder. So it sets the pace, or it sets the tone. It also sets the pace for the um, essay. Um, the next. Um, creative decision the author made was the disassociation from the blame. Um, so this essay sort of talks about is talking about what the right thing to do is, what's morally correct, and there are points when the narrator tries to take away the blame from themselves, and it's. Like here, it says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you smell delicious. It's, the narrator is apologizing to the mouse, but it's also blaming the mouse for it being their fault, for the mouse's fault for smelling good, but also the husband's fault for using olive oil to begin with. Um, there's also the scene where it says, or the... I guess the sentence that says, you will sob and apologize to the mouse because you know you knew the glue trap was left in the furnace room by your home's previous owner, but by the time you remember to remove it, it will have served its purpose. And so in this part, it's putting the blame on the previous homeowner, but despite the narrator not believing in it, they didn't, they didn't feel like they had, it is ultimately their fault for not removing it, even though they knew it was there. Um but it's still taking the blame away from themselves. And then another time this happens is when they actually leave the mouse in the snow. You will return to your family and watch a holiday movie as the boys munch on popcorn and ask for more. Um, the narrator is able to walk away here where the mouse isn't. Its leg is literally broken and it's slowly dying. But... Um, it's able to walk away, the narrator is able to walk away from this. Another creative decision the author made was the use of second person you. 
Um, this may seem contradictory to my former point about the disassociation from blame, but it may work with it depending on how you view it because um, the second person you assigns the story to the reader um, as if it's happening to you as you read it. It's meant to make us question the moral thing to do in a situation like this. Is it right to kill the mouse and take it out of its misery? Um, or uh, opposingly, who gives us the right to take away another being's life? This idea um, comes across when the author writes, you will for a moment think he can free himself, but he won't. You're hope the, I guess the narrator or you are hoping um, that it can save itself so you won't have to make the decision yourself. But um, another, or the final creative decision the author made that I'm going to point out is the emphasis on her purpose. I already read this line, but it was, um, by the time you remember to remove it, it will have served its purpose, her purpose. Um, I found this one to be the most innocuous and had trouble understanding it. I'm curious to know what you think. For now, my understanding is that the emphasis is on in reference to the glue trap or even the previous homeowner, um, the previous homeowners um, putting the purpose and putting the glue trap there in the first place. And so on a smaller scale, this essay is about wanting to help a hopeless mouse stuck on a glue trap, but you're, but you're not knowing, or you or the narrator, not knowing what to do or not being able to do it because it seems as though the narrator knows what the right thing to do is, but doesn't want to do it. On a universal scale, this essay is about what makes something humane and it questions morality, something I talked about a bit earlier. And so my official question to you is a two-part question, is, uh, and it's what do you think the correct response to a situation like this is? Um, is the narrator wrong for not wanting to kill the mouse? Do you think this question conflicts with the use of the second person, you, in this essay? And my writing prompt based on this essay is to, for you to talk about a time when you weren't sure what the right thing to do was, a time when you didn't know, when you did something that was the opposite of what you thought you would do. And so that's all I have. Um, thank you for listening.